Neely? Here. Mrs. Lyford? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murray? Here. Here. Mrs. Perry? Mrs. Shea? Here. Mrs. Starr? Here. Ms. Hobbs? Mr. Vashon? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Are you going to play tonight? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Do you have any adjustments? There are no adjustments to the agenda. Okay. Um, do we have any public comment on agenda items? Seeing none, I'll close public comments. We take this to 6.0, recognition. So we have two recognitions tonight. I'm going to ask our middle school principal, Barb Hathorn, to come to the podium um, for both recognitions. And then I'll give a little intro and she'll add some more details. So come on up, Barb. Um, and for our first recognition, I'd also ask uh, one of our middle school teachers, Doug Bennett, to join Barb at the podium. Doug Bennett is a teacher at the Scarborough Middle School and has been for over 20 years. He, he is also a coach, and he has coached um, girls soccer since 1990. He's also the founder of Red Storm Strikes Out Cancer, a group of staff, students, and community members who raise money for cancer research. This year, this group, led by Doug, was one of the top fundraisers for Mary's Walk in Saco. Barb? So I would like to recognize Doug Bennett for his work with Red Storm Strikes Out Cancer. Doug is a civics teacher on the eighth grade community. This is his ninth year leading this charge. This year he raised $11,659.18. Is that right? I get it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly small donations, and those really add up. In total, over the last nine years, he has raised $110,000 which all goes for cancer research. That's a lot of hard work. His focus is on education and having students volunteer their time to join in this fight to save lives. Through his dedication, hard work, and enthusiasm. <laughs> Wait, <you're> enthusiastic. <laughs> he has had hundreds of students and adults involved in his effort. We are very fortunate to have Mr. Bennett as a member of the Scarborough Public Schools community. Doug. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. I'd make one correct to Mrs. Hathorne's comments. She kept saying he, but it really should be we, because uh, Red Storm Central Cancer is a, is a team. Um, so I'd like to start by saying thank you to my admin team who, uh, who supports me and lets me chase this with my wildest dreams as far as I've been allowed to chase it. And uh, I wouldn't be at 100, we would not be at 110,000 without their support. Uh, the staffs and students of Scarborough Middle School and the entire school district is absolutely amazing. It's, uh, it, it might be every day, every time we do this, how important this is and how important finding a cure is to so many people because the amount of people get involved is astronomical. Uh, like Mrs. Hathorne said, we raised $110,000. I'm trying to picture $110,000. I, I, it's, it's almost impossible. It's, it's impossible. It, re it really is. Uh, <laughs> Especially as a teacher, I guess. But uh, <laughs> different, story, different, day. <laughs> different debate, different debate. But uh, um, in rough, I, I don't do have exact numbers, but almost, like I figure about 80 to 90 percent of that is from small donations, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty, maybe fifty bucks. Every once in a while, we get a really big donation here and there. But you know, I'm like I'm thinking like eighty to ninety thousand of that is those small little donations of kids bringing money in from their piggy banks or getting money from their grandparents at Christmas time and giving it to us and buying T-shirts and coming to basketball games and just chipping in, like, you know, we came up with 18 cents at the end. 18 cents came from somebody's sofa or something. I don't, I don't know where. But like, we have donation boxes in every, in every, every home room in the school, or many home rooms in the school, and it, kids are still a little change in there. And it really adds up quickly, obviously, when you're, we're averaging like $12,000 a year. Um, but just as important, I think, is the money we raise, and that money is certainly uh, making a big difference, but it's the time people give. I mean, like hundreds of people a year, without exaggeration, get involved. They participate in the basketball game. We have a huge staff versus student basketball game. Superintendent Kuchenberg was a huge star in that game. <laughs> Dominating force on the offensive boards. Mr. Currier, of course, is equally, Im equally impressive, sort of. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, we, we, we sell T-shirts, and we make posters, and we uh, collect money, and we roll money, and we... 
uh, make announcements in school, and we just do tons and tons of things. So literally, the time people put in is just as valuable. And to me, it really reminds me, again, how important this is. I can't tell you kids, I don't even know. I've never seen, I just, maybe I've seen them walk in the halls. They don't, I don't know their names. They come to me and tell me their stories about their grandparents or their, their neighbor or friend or a sister or brother or parent. And it just inspires me that, you know, finding a cure is not an option. It is going to happen at some point. Um, one thing that's really important I think you guys should know, what does $110,000 mean um, for cancer research in Maine? All of our money goes to the Maine Cancer Foundation. It all stays here for research and supporting uh, the cancer needs in the state of Maine. Um, what has this done? It has uh, paid for an entire year of lab research to find a cure. Cool. I mean, Scarborough Middle School had paid for an entire year of lab research. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's awesome. Uh, Eleven community grants have also been given out from our money. I don't know what that means, but it's, uh, it sounds impressive. Sorry, I left it. <laughs> Four full-year support programs have been sponsored by us. Entire counties in the state of Maine's cancer for smoking and whatnot have been paid for by Scarborough Middle School. It's, uh, like, it's just an endless amount of um, difference the kids and staff and students have made in our, our school. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, how, how does a small group make a fun of cure? It, it's, it's happening. Scarborough Middle School, Red Storm Center Cancer, it's finding a cure, there's no question about it. So thank you for uh, recognizing me. We've got bigger, bigger and better plans for next year, our 10th anniversary, and, we'll keep, and we're going to keep going until we find a cure. So I guess that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Here, go to Greece. <laughs> go get to the play. Go get to the play. All right. Here's <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Yes, uh, wait and see what he has in store for next year. We're pretty excited. So we'll keep it under wraps until it's all finalized. All right, I would like to recognize the uh, math team at the middle school. They, uh, Dave and I were at uh, an, our own leadership meeting. We were all around the table, and one of the teachers came to the door, was knocking, holding up her awards. They were so excited. The coaches could not believe how well our kids did, better than ever. So the uh, 2017 state meet was this week. The 6th, 7th, and 8th grade math teams participated in the, uh, in the uh, meet on Tuesday at the Portland Expo. It was an exciting and successful day. The students were outstanding and had the most successful meet of the year, actually the most successful meet ever. The sixth grade team finished third out of 28 schools and the eighth grade team placed second. There were a lot of individual awards, however. Grade six, I would like to recognize the members. Adam Bennettston, Brendan Ammon, Aiden Bristol, Stella Grondin, Matt Frizzle, and Yulia Bertulia. Matt Frizzle received an individual trophy, trophy, finishing in the third place overall with a score of 34 points. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Grade 7, um, the team members, Remy Bristol, Diego Gaddy, Carrick Morgan, Maddie Strauss, Jason Thatcher, and Quentin Wu. Quentin placed third as an individual, and the team came in third overall. Eighth grade, the members were Maggie Ammon, Harshini Shiganti, Rachel Frizzle, Jay Krithavis, Mia Ranello, and Lena Wood. Harshini Shiganti placed fourth individually, and Lena Wood came in first with a perfect individual score. It was unbelievable. And you have to know a lot of the school systems only have their Gates students participate. That's not what we do at the middle school. Any student that wants to try out for the math team, they go to practices, they try out for each individual meet. So we have students not just our Gates kids, anyone that loves math. The sixth grade um, coach is Randy Allen, 
the coach for the seventh and eighth grades is Mary Ann Page, and they are just so excited they can't wait. They're already planning for next year. They are already <laughs> working to. They already know what they're doing this summer to get ready. Um, seventh grade math teacher Nate Wentworth volunteers his time with the seventh and eighth graders, and if you knew Nate, Mr. Wentworth, he's very laid back, calm, laid back. He was so excited. I could not. We couldn't believe it. He was so funny. So they celebrated. They had a great lunch at the Main Mall Food Court. That was exciting. <laughs> it was a great day. That's what we heard about when they got back. But so congratulations to all the students and the coaches. They did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Exciting stuff, but I most I also appreciated the smiles on the faces of Barb and Dave as they are talking about their staff and students. So thank you for sharing. Yep, those are the two recognitions for tonight. Okay, so 7.0, superintendent's report. Um, as promised, I have our monthly enrollment update. And so for the third month in a row, our enrollment has stayed, our overall enrollment has stayed exactly the same. We still have 2,986 students, um, plus or minus a few students at each level. So we have three less students at the high school. Middle school, exactly the same for the third month in a row. One additional student at Wentworth, um, same exact students at Blue Point, number of students I should say, um, two new students at Eight Corners, and then um, Pleasant Hill has the same number of students this month as they had last month. So again, the overall enrollment is 2,986 students. And you might remember that we started the school year back in September with 2,969 students, so um, we have about... 17 students more. Mm -hmm. 17 math. So that is our enrollment update. Um, the uh, questions that were submitted prior to the, the town and school budget forum on April 26th and the questions that were asked at the forum should be available online at the budget portal. Um, we've been working really hard to answer those questions thoroughly. Um, each one could literally be its own little essay, so we tried to be as informative yet concise as we could be so that folks would find value in the responses. And we appreciate um, all of the folks who attended the forum, but also who took the time to submit their questions ahead of time and encourage folks to go back and look at both the responses from the school department and the towns were posted last week sometime. So they both should be available for you on our budget portal. Um, and as we all know in this room, but for our community at home, our high school is putting on their spring musical Grease. Um, tonight is opening night, but then there are also performances on um, May 6th at 1 o'clock and um, 7 o'clock. And then on Sunday, May 7th, there is a 1 o'clock performance. I plan on attending at 1 o'clock on Saturday, and we cannot wait. We're so excited. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything about Greece. No, well, that's why our students are not here. Um, both Lizzie and... Um, Thomas. And Thomas are in the show, and so obviously they can't be with us tonight, so we don't have any student reports. But um, yeah, we're super <coughs> proud of the kids that put in a lot of hours to make these shows happen. So, and this was a pretty much a student-driven show. This was their idea to have a second musical this year, and mm -hmm. um, the kids were producers. Lizzie and um, Hallie Scamble were the producers, and they made it happen. They're little engines. So three, three opportunities in addition to tonight, um, two tomorrow and one on Sunday. No, no. None tomorrow. Oh, no. Two Saturday, two one Saturday, Sunday. Two Saturday, one Sunday. Sorry. I keep thinking it's Friday. No shows Friday. Um, and then I'm going to ask Joanne to give us two updates. She's going to talk to us about a K-5 event that's coming up and then also about the interview process for an anticipated opening of the Pleasant Hill Principal K slash K-2 Improvement Strategist. Okay, uh, next uh, Thursday, May 11th at uh, 6 o'clock at the Wentworth Learning Commons, um, there will be a presentation and workshop for raising media smart elementary children. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity for parents to attend. And there are several guest speakers. I know um, one of our SROs is speaking, our tech integrator is doing a workshop. Um, I have Mr. Thurlow is doing a workshop. Um, and it is in conjunction with the public library, and it is how to keep your kids safe with uh, the social media that is out there. 
so I encourage parents uh, to please attend. Um, I think sometimes we are um, not not up to uh, what some of our kids are being exposed to, and um, we want to just make parents aware. And this is a, a good opportunity to hear from different people and um, how to keep your child safe, and you be smart with the social media that is going on. So Thursday, May 11, 6 o'clock at the Wentworth Learning uh, Commons, and um, I'm planning on going because I think there's a lot to learn, um, all of us, from something like that. And I appreciate the time and energy that uh, the Wentworth staff, in conjunction with the Public Library, have put into this event. Okay? Thank you. And um, this week, um, we began interviews for the K-2 um, principal and improvement strategist. Um, I have to say that the applications that we had, we had quite a few, were outstanding. And we um, did our first round this week with uh, six candidates. And um, we were very, very impressed with the uh, quality of the candidates that um, applied for the position. Next week, we'll be doing um, a second round of interviews with, our, with some finalists. And then we will um, uh, make a choice, or one or two, to pass on to Julie to meet. And um, we should have a principal on board for July 1. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and then our final update tonight is uh, a presentation. So I'm, I've asked Monique Culbertson to come to the podium tonight and present to you an update on our 24-month plan. Um, as you know, this 24-month plan expired officially um, in, at the end of April, but it really still is very much driving our work um, as we think about our next strategic planning process. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, typically, we've done these updates and the entire Leadership Council was present and it would run about uh, two hours or so. So I've um, cut it back to only three hours. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> just would like to move this along here. There we go. As you know, um, we have four goals, four broad goals that has guided our work. Within each of the goals, we have improvement targets, and each phase level um, articulates those improvement targets. And you may um, re recall that within the budget document itself, which is also posted on the website, there are updates and highlights in regard to our uh, goals and our improvement strategies. Uh, so the budget document would be a great place to go to find additional detail. Tonight, though, I'm really just going to focus on a few highlights uh, around each of the goals. Uh, we've been very, very busy this year um, across all goal areas, um, but particularly so, I'll begin with K-5. The Literacy Initiative, as you know, has been going on for about three years. We started with writing. We had a pilot group work with reading last year, uh, but this is our first full year with uh, the implementation of the Units of Study for Reading. Uh, and uh, we've been surveying teachers. We've been gathering data as we've been moving along. Um, but the teachers are feeling pretty good about this program, and they're feeling pretty good about this program because they're seeing the gains in students' work. Uh, for example, uh, there was one situation where we had visitors coming in from uh, Freeport area, and they remarked they were so impressed uh, because the students didn't even notice they were in the room. Uh, they were so engaged with what they were doing in their reading. So statistically, 84% of the classroom teachers Talk, spoke, uh, reported that um, the programming has had a positive effect on students. Uh, and the teachers are agreeing to quite a bit. They're very excited about the language within the reading workshop, but the gains, um, but particularly students' independence. I was doing an observation in a classroom, and I went in, and I introduced to the students. I sat down, and I was just going to look around, and I'm doing my observation of the classroom teacher, and it came a point in the time of the lesson where the students were to, you know, identify their strategies and start practicing by reading to themselves. And this young gal came up to me with her bucket of books and just looked, I don't know, you know, at my type, man. Yeah. Would you like to hear me read? Sure, I'll hear you read. What's your strategy? She knew her strategy. She used her strategy. She knew when she used her strategy. She wanted to make sure that I knew that she was using her strategy. And we, we read several books together as I was listening to her read over the course of the lesson. Um, it was pretty impressive, pretty darn impressive. What uh, grade level was that, Monique? Do you remember? That one was grade one. That was grade one. 
One of the things that we try and track is the number of minutes that students are reading independently. And you'll notice before the units of study, we had about 31% report that students really read independently only about five or 10 minutes. And in reading, this, there's this thing called stamina for reading. Our students right now are 31% um, <coughs> reported that they are now reading independently 25 to 30 minutes. And that makes a big difference because the more independent reading that takes place, this is a wonderful chart which describes uh, one minute a day. <coughs> That's only about 8,000 words a year. But you'll notice if a student reads about 20 minutes a day, that's over a million, close to two million words a day. So while they are reading more, it's not just time spent, it really adds to the comprehension, it adds to understanding, it adds to word recognition, and um, pretty clearly across uh, K right through five, 36% of our students are reading 20 minutes or more. So that's a wonderful target. We continue to try and increase that for all students, but it's a wonderful goal. Particularly interesting, and I quickly mentioned this during the budget meeting, um, but before the units of study, we had a benchmark goal for our kindergartners. By the end of the year that our kindergartners know 21 high-frequency words, those words that you recognize rather quickly while you read. But after the implementation, and this is just the first year, as we were gathering the data, the average across all, every single kindergarten classroom um, was 21, over 21, and that was by January, when we took a temperature reading in January. So this is really causing us to take a look at our benchmarks for our students as well uh, as we move forward. So for our young learners, basically, I'm not going to read through all of this, but basically the rigor of the literacy programming, because we are using some pretty consistent, effective professional strategies, and we have quality curriculum materials, the rigor is increasing and we're seeing that result with our students. We provided teachers with summer professional development, they've maximized their PLT time, they meet after school for their teacher design time, they meet during curriculum meetings, and we also um, pull teachers out of the classroom to do model lessons with each other and to plan their units together. We also have teachers working in consultation with the instructional coaches uh, to talk about, okay, let's take a look at this reading inventory of a particular child. Where is this child? What do they need to do next? And then the instructional coach helps them with the strategy. So it is a comprehensive professional development support program, and that's why we're getting the results that we're seeing here. I don't mean to interrupt, but a question just popped into my head. Are the children able to go to their computer to look up a word if they don't know what the word means? Depends on the purpose of the activity. If it's okay. an activity where we're looking for recall for that, maybe not. But if they're looking to problem solve a word or look for the definition, that's one of the strategies. That's one of the resources that they can use to go and do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And as we know, through the budget process, we have invested significantly in this literacy initiative and we are seeing the return on our investment. I leave you um, with some words from our, our kiddos. Uh, one child, and I heard the instructional quote share this story, uh, the student said that I love this new reading thing. Actually, this child sought out the instructional coach and actually said, are you the person in charge of this new reading program? Uh, but what, and she said, not really, I'm just helping the teachers. Um, but he described that before the teachers gave me the book, just gave me a book to read, and now I have more time to read and I have choice. Uh, he was pretty excited that he got to pick out his books that he would like to read. So I leave you with some of those quotes. Uh, at the six, eight. Um, one of the um, highlights this year has been the success of the bridge program and as you recall that was an investment in this past year's budget uh, and that bridge program was to complement the academic support services that the middle school provides for all students um, what and it's transitional support it is indeed a bridge to provide those students who may be suffering from concussions or other significant uh, medical issues or scaffolding instruction. We're finding that we have students who come to Scarborough who aren't able to access our curriculum. 
Uh, and so uh, statistically, this year, we've had over 51 students served, and 47 of those students have transitioned back into the classroom. Mm -hmm. And while it's a revolving door, some students may be there for a couple weeks, some students may be there for a few days, um, it all depends. But the goal is, and we are pursuing that goal rigorously, to transition those students back into the classroom so that they're successful. We also keep an eye on them. We have safety nets for them as well. At the high school, the high school had, um, as a result of the calendar, had significant time to address a number of issues and initiatives that they've been involved in. They addressed both goal one, but also goal three as well. As you know, the NIA self-study, um, as a result of the time allocated, they are on target for the visit in November. Uh, they're at a point now where each of the committees have identified uh, strengths and needs for the high school and the faculty are beginning to com um, work with those strengths and needs, have discussions around those to identify and prioritize those. Uh, one of the things that was an interesting outcome as I sit on the steering committee for that initiative uh, is that there's this recognition on the part of staff that, you know, these improvement efforts that we're doing during PLC time and during curriculum time, we're really starting to address these needs as we're going along, which really is the way an improvement plan or an improvement process should work. As you know, there have been schedule shifts in the um, high school um, schedule. Uh, those pieces address both goals uh, one and three as students are accessing that time to get extra help from classroom teachers and within advisory, they're developing that meaningful relationship that they'll carry through over the four years. Uh, in addition, through grant funds, uh, we have the position of the Director of Teaching and Learning and this position has really allowed the focus for each department to work with this person to do the curriculum work necessary and the instructional work necessary to help make some of the Marzano, the teacher evaluation pieces, the PLC pieces, um, take root within the classroom. Uh, they've worked 6 through 12 to articulate standards and learning goals across the core areas. We're focusing clearly on that ninth grade year, the class of 2021. Uh, but also um, working with uh, the middle school as well to make sure that those standards are solid and build upon the work at the middle school. But for example, taking those 21 core teachers that will be most involved next year, we've been able to work within the schedule and our timepiece to provide about 121 plus person hours of professional development to those folks to get them going along the way. Also at the high school, the additional staffing, which was a significant investment in preparation for the schedule changes that will take place this year, allowed not only just smaller class sizes in some of the core courses, but also allowed additional courses to be offered to be able to offer students more choice and flexibility. Um, and so in those areas, this also is within the um, budget documentation, but we've been able to offer more advanced classes, but also additional electives so students can pursue their interests, for example, in robotics or engineering or forensic science or genom genomics. Genomics, I think that is. Um, also, addressing goal three around citizenship is our proposed graduation requirements align rather well with our goals. Uh, part of those requirements, uh, there's this notion of personal learning experiences. So students will have choice. Um, but they will also have um, the requirement of engaging in some sort of community, civic, or service learning experience as part of the fulfillment of their graduation requirement as well. Also in and around goal two, um, as you may have um, participated in the six through 12, the boys to men and hardy girls, healthy girls initiative. Um, but this notion of safe and equitable schools for all really permeates throughout each school in lots of different ways. Certainly we had that event and then we followed up with education um, for the students and that will be a continuing part of our wellness curriculum. We have buddy systems in place across all phase levels and we also have student groups and students supporting each other, whether it's a civil rights team or a student activity. And we've also connected with the Equity Improvement Network to access those resources within our schools as well. We're also focused on educating the whole child. Much of the work in and around the guiding principles uh, and also in the student support services is really focusing on executive functioning skills. We sometimes call those uh, study skills or learning to learn skills. Um, but we've also um, accessed some consultant services 
to follow up and help staff with inclusion practices so that we make sure that our learning environments are inclusive um, and safe for risk taking for all students. We're also um, involved in establishing, developing, trying to get going some mentor programs. There's one underway at Wentworth School, uh, which came out of a PLT, a group of teachers um, and ed techs who generally kind of watch and keep an eye on students are noticing that there's a batch of kiddos that just may not be well served enough. Uh, they're the kiddos who um, may not have friends or make friends very easily, may have some um, trouble connecting to folks and so we're looking at developing a mentor program and accessing our community and business partners to um, develop. We're modeling it after the South Portland program where maybe they would go and have lunch or visit this a business and have a mentor there. And we would do training for the mentor and the students. And it's just time to connect with an adult. Uh, so we're looking to try and pilot something along those lines and then um, scale that up. And lastly, addressing goal four, um, as you know, uh, Dr. Entwistle um, started the schools, uh, Scarborough Schools and Business Partnership, uh, but I, along with Karen Martin of SEDCO, um, have co-chaired that this year, and I'm pretty excited to um, share with you that we have some accomplishments, some significant accomplishments. We've developed a draft action plan with vision and mission, but we've also established subcommittees who are working um, quite hard. Um, we have one on communication. We have another on protocols for partnership and personal learning experiences. So for example, the protocols for partnership are really looking to try to build or identify sort of that intake form to help develop those relationships with businesses and schools. We've also articulated how partners may become involved in our schools. Sometimes there are speakers that want to come in. Sometimes it's an experience like job shadowing. So we've categorized those and organized those in such a way that we feel like we have a pretty solid draft to go out into the community and say, are you interested? Let's have a conversation and see what might develop. Uh, and then the we'll turn that stuff over to the communication committee who will help promote that. There's discussion around developing a website, print resources, uh, and having Karen as a co-chair has been wonderful. Thank you, Karen. Uh, but also the high school has, been, um, has a committee in, with involved um, partners where um, they're developing the personal learning experience as part of the high school graduation requirements, but the school business partners are also helping out in the development of some of those experiences, and we certainly will be needing to tap into those folks so our students have many experiences out in our community as they prepare for post-secondary um, participation. That's, those, that's the highlights. Um, and let's go back to the, in terms of the goals and how we've been managing to keep ourselves busy and um, provide Scarborough community with a good return on their investments for those budget investments. Questions? I just had a comment about how um, I've really noticed how the reading units of study, the reading and writing units of study, how well that dovetails with the work in proficiency-based education mm. that you all are engaged in because I have seen in my own kids how well they can talk about their own learning and how cognizant they are of it and how student-led it is. And I think that these kids, even in K2, are going to be so ready for this new type of learning as they get older and it's going to be absolutely second nature to them by the time they're in middle school and high school. So I can really <coughs> see that connection. That's good to hear. That was part of the criteria as we selected, have been selecting curriculum material over the years is the opportunity for those sorts of independent learning skills. Mm -hmm. Jackie? Um, I'm, I'm very excited about the direction that we're going in at all levels. And I, I think that the, it appears as though we're on the right track uh, with our youngsters and it's so wonderful to hear how excited the children are and the oldsters, <laughs> teeners, <laughs> about, uh, about their learning experiences. And, and I would like at some point this spring, and I don't want this to be a downer, I know we have programs in place to monitor bullying. But there's been so much in the media lately, and we've not had an update 
couple of years now. I just want to assure myself in this community that we're still on the right track. And I know that there must be some incidents. I mean, we have almost 3,000 children. So uh, just a brief report on what's happening and uh, is it because children are out of control or is it we missed something? I'm not afraid to say we blew it if we blew it. You know what I'm saying. So, But I think it's important for us as a school board and for a community to know that we are constantly monitoring the behaviors of our school children. Thank you. We can and certainly provide that. Yeah, we definitely can. And um, Jackie, I think you'll be, uh, again, pleasantly surprised or encouraged and uh, affirmed that we have some really good work happening in our schools, particularly while the middle school is sitting here. They have really, Dave has been really leaving, leading a lot of work with our staff and students around restorative practices. So we're really trying to look at discipline as an opportunity to learn as well. And so I'm happy to provide an update on that. Thank you. But also the main Voice to Men project and the um, Hardy Girls Healthy right. Women all those initiatives are all tying into the school climate and culture, which yep. if that improves, then there's less opportunity. And, um, I just want us to be bullying. ahead of the game, mm -hmm. number one, and I think we are, and up front with the public and our parents and each other, actually. Um, I'm confident that, that we're doing the right things. I just want to hear it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Donna? Well, and I, I'm not sure where, whether this applies to the 24-month plan or not, but um, over the past couple of years, we have talked about um, the possibility of adding a foreign language at the uh, K-2 level. And it, I know it's not in here, but where are we with any of that kind of work? I, it's kind of like drifted out of... <laughs> site for the past year. I, we haven't really brought it up or talked about it. Um, is there any thinking, any discussions? That it's not in the current budget for the fall. There's also and nothing in 3-5. Right, so it would be a K-5. Yeah, K-5. I mean, even if we were to hire a half-time person at K-1, and one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then we could increase that a little bit each year. So, you know, you just get something underway with the youngest kids and foreign language, I would, I would really love to see that in our plans. Absolutely. It has not gone away. It is um, in um, the queue with competing, all the competing priorities, um, but it is certainly um, has not gone away. Uh, we've been quite busy this year with these pieces, focusing on these pieces sure. and the um, urgency by, uh, set by the state mandate around mm -hmm. the PBE piece. Uh, and so um, that has sort of put a pause on being able to move forward with a budget recommendation. Yeah, I can completely understand that. Um, I just wanted to put in a plug to say, <laughs> let's not forget about that because that is like really, really important. Much appreciated. <clears throat> Anybody else? Oh, I just wondered when. So, when did you pilot this new program for the K to five? When was that pilot? We began uh, three years ago now with writing, and then last year uh, we had about 15 or 20 teachers w who wanted to step forward and begin the reading pieces, uh, and we used those folks as we. It wasn't a pilot. We called them pioneers, or they called themselves pioneers. <laughs> Uh, so they began with the reading actually last year, but everyone, K-5, um, began implementation this year with the reading. And both fold into each other and, um, and support each other in learning. Um, so it wasn't as if it was a brand new curriculum, but it was certainly a large, literacy is 75 to 80 percent of the K-5 day um, because it is the Foundation. backbone of the curriculum um, moving forward for K-5. Yeah. I, I think um, my daughter was in the, the pilot program for the writing, and I, I remember it writing. was amazing, the difference in her writing from the fall to the end, and all of her classmates. So I was pleased to hear that it's continuing, because I thought it was an amazing program. Thank you. And this summer we have two teachers from the Wentworth um, 
team, if mm -hmm. you will, that are that will be going to a week long institute at Teachers College to engage in some of the professional development there. Are they going in the they've summer? They've applied for that. I'm not sure if they've heard yet. Um, they've definitely heard. I know that Kelly sent out um, an acknowledgement to to the teachers that were accepted, and um, one of the thing one of those um, experiences is being funded by the the operating budget, the general fund or of the school department, and the other is um, grant funded through SCF, the Scarborough Ed Foundation. So we are really excited for them to have that opportunity and. Um, I know this kind of lets out my inner geek when I say this, but I had the opportunity to go as a principal in 2011 to a coaching institute, and I, I literally feel like it was a life-changing event for me and opened up a whole new perspective on how students learn and um, how independent they can be. And when they are in the driver's seat, as Monique was talking about, um, it's amazing to see how much they grow in a school year. It really is. So we're excited for that. Great. Thank you so much, Monique. And Thank you. That was a really short three hours. So. Oh, thank you. Good <laughs> work. Bye. It was very <laughs> interesting. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> okay. So that takes us to 8.0, the chair's report. Um, first, I'll do a courtesy update. The Kiwanis Fishing Derby, which was scheduled for this Saturday, has been pushed out a week due to um, predicted rain. 9 to 1 at Bailey's Campground next Saturday, not this Saturday. We have a lot of kids involved in the K Kids and Builders Club and Key Club that um, help run that event. So that's pushed back a week. I also just want to make a general thank you to the community for getting involved and being engaged in conversations in the last two months. Um, we often sit here alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not unlike tonight, but <laughs> thank you for those who are here. Um, it's important for us to know where you are, where you stand on things. Email is a great tool, but coming in person, like nothing replaces that. To come, and it's not easy for people to talk in public or at a microphone and say things that might be unpopular to the people assembled or at home. Um, I think it, it says something that um, people take the time to come to meetings, and we invite you to come all the time whether it's about the budget or start times or to congratulate the math team. Like, things are going on at every meeting, and we hope that um, we get more regular community involvement because it makes us feel like we are not working in a vacuum, which we understand on a higher level. But when you see people here who are interested in the topics um, about running the school department, that makes it feel like we are working for the community and not just for kids and teachers and staff. Um, so come back. <laughs> I hope it wasn't terrible while you were here. Um, and we always have we always have interesting things on the agenda, whether it's hidden in a committee report, you never know what you're going to hear, and it could relate to your child or something that comes up for them in the next year or two. So um, welcome. <laughs> Pretty much it. Um, Greece, we already talked about, is, is happening. That's kind of the big news in town right now. And um, that's it. We don't have any. We don't have any students. I'm trying to think of things that they might be covering at the school. I'm sure they have lengthy reports for us when they return. Wentworth Band. Concerts. Oh, the Wentworth Band concerts are next week for the fifth graders. Their first time out of the gate with their instruments. That's Monday, and is it the following Monday? There's two different ones. They're all on the school website, which we have a great calendar. So all your events that you might need to know about go there. <laughs> okay, so come here, go there. Come here, check it out. <laughs> All right, committee reports. We'll start right down at finance. Nothing going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> um, so I sort of feel like a broken record. Well, day in and day out, meeting in and meeting out. Um, so we met uh, before this meeting. We had a joint finance committee meeting again with the town council and. Um, where we are now is we approved, um, at the second reading, we approved a budget that had been refined by another $1.5 million. That's what we approved. And, and since that time, we've asked the superintendent and the town manager to go back again 
um, to find a little bit more because there's a goal um, of 3% that the town council set at the beginning of the budget cycle. And while we um, respect that and, and all understand have been working towards that, we're doing our best to find refinements that will get us to about 3.5%. And so we have asked both the town manager and the superintendent to go back and continue to find some um, savings or increased revenue. And so for the school side, it's, it comes out to about another $191,000, $92,000. And, and so Julie has gone to the leadership um, and asked them to review their own budgets and sort of look to line items and if there are places that they can make adjustments to, to, to put that out there. Um, as an option, so it may be postponing investments or um, having a position go unfilled. Um, all of those things are sort of on the table for the leadership to decide and, and find. And I think the important part of that process is that she's also asked them to say what is the, impl what, what is the implication of that reduction or that um, savings. And so. Those will all be discussed on Tuesday at the leadership um, meeting. Because I think it's important for Julie not to make those cuts because she, going down the line, you don't know how that affects the entire school or the entire department. So for her, having the leadership be able to, to look at their plan and where they're trying to go and to make um, adjustments accordingly seems the most efficient and, and productive way. So that is currently happening and we will meet the $191,000, $192,000 um, that is required. We just don't know at this point where that will be. Stay tuned, I will report again. Um, then the other thing I just wanted to make sure that the whole board was aware of was the use of additional state funds that may come in, it kind of gets confusing, but in the past if we receive additional state funds after we've accepted our budget, um, that goes to future year's fund balance. Mm -hmm. What we've been allowed to do this year is um, the town council will vote. I had said at the budget forum that it was going to be a second question. That's not the case. Um, we've talked to council and um, or legal counsel, and so the town council can make that recommendation and that decision. So the Joint Finance Committee has recommended that we take 50% of any additional funds that we get from the state and use that to reduce the tax rate this year, and then 50% of it will be put into fund balance for future years. So that is the recommendation from the Joint Finance Committee to the town council, but I felt like you all should be aware of, of that as well. And then lastly, the third quarter numbers will be sent out next week from Kate. So if you get them and have questions, direct them to me and I'm happy to answer them or I will have Kate answer them. And next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Seven up to ten. Well, <laughs> no, no. Next Wednesday. I, I do day by day. Yeah. <laughs> um, next Wednesday is the joint meeting of the town council and the school board. The whole town council, the whole school board sits together and goes through the budget, answers questions for those who aren't on, primarily for those who aren't on the finance committees. It's a chance to have your questions answered. Um, and talked about before the second vote of the town council. Okay. That's next Wednesday, and it's at 7 o'clock. It is at 7? Um, yes. Yeah. We ch yes, we checked that today, and seven consensus was 7 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. The second reading? The second reading is May 17th at 7 o'clock. I'd like to spread it out. Mm -hmm. keep, it, keep this train going. And then three and a half weeks later, June 13th, mm -hmm. right, vote. Okay. Okay. Donna? Um, so policy, um, currently the policy committee is working on uh, graduation policy as well as um, taking a look very soon at activity eligibility as it relates to proficiency education and graduation. 
So uh, these are taking lengthy discussions and we're actually meeting for longer amounts of time right now in order to cover some of these things. Another um, piece that we've been working on is clarifying our boosters policy and uh, we'll be bringing actually probably both of these to you uh, hopefully the beginning of June mm -hmm. so that we can have these things underway in August. Then um, I also attended the School Business Partnership Subcommittee meeting that was held on April 24th. I am on the Personal Learning Experiences Committee that Monique was just talking to you about. And at that meeting, um, one of our high school teachers, Christy Savasnik, um, talked to us about the proposal that she has for a pro program at the high school for next year contingent on the employment of that business mentorship coordinator for the high school. And um, students would um, select or already have selected for next year, hoping that that will be a part of the budget this year. They've selected to be a part of this semester long course. So they're signing up already, for, they did two weeks ago for, for courses for next year. So this would be an opportunity for students to gain credit towards graduation while working in an unpaid internship with local businesses or organizations. The experience would take place second semester and for next year it would be 11th and 12th graders um, and they would do a career interest survey that would be used with um, students to identify what careers they might be interested in potentially and where they might like to have an internship. And they would be required to apply for and then interview with prospective businesses that might match their interest. And they would, um, as a part of it, they would have to submit their reflections of their work and they would be visited um, weekly or quite regularly by their teacher at the work site, which would be um, the new mentorship coordinator position. And so um, they would be able to, we would be able to have up to 24 students involved with this experience for second semester for next year in the event that that position is, is funded. So. And just the, the, just for clarification, the position that Donna's speaking about in our budget is titled Internship and Academy Coordinator. Yeah. So hopefully that, hopefully that won't be something that gets cut. Um, particularly the businesses are really supportive of this position. Mm -hmm. um, they, we brought in some people from South Portland who have had this position for several years. I know in Portland that they've had this kind of position for a lot of years mm -hmm. and as a paid position and you know it it certainly you know would enhance our community would enhance our involvement with our businesses and would be a terrific experience for our high school students to be able to work particularly with the eight period schedule it means that they could be at a business for a significant block of time mm -hmm. So um, they could really do some work, say, in any one, particularly biotech or technology field or mm -hmm. medical field. Just a whole host of things. So it would be really cool if, if that does come to fruition. Um, the regular um, school and business partnership meeting that was held this morning, I was unable to attend, but it, the next meeting fall forward will be in, not until August. So. Basically, those committees have been doing their work and bringing back to this larger committee. Hmm. And just to add to that, we had a very productive school community business partnership meeting this morning, as Monique mentioned earlier, and um, several community business partners um, in the room and both by, also by email have been advocating for this internship and academy coordinator and feel that um, it's a critical investment for our students and for our community. Um, so that is, uh, it, it's exciting to have that support, but also that push um, mm -hmm. to help us make the next steps that we need to in order to really pull all these pieces together. Good, thanks. 
Christine, do you have any long range planning? Other than our applications are into the state, we'll just wait with bated breath to hear 17 months to go. Yeah. So I was going to say somewhere <laughs> we along have a, clock, a year and a half from now. So behind us perhaps we should all add that to our iPhone as a uh -huh. calendar. Regular right ticker? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, but that's it. Okay. Great. Communications? Um, not too much new to report right now. We uh, are going to meet tomorrow with Joanne and Peter Esposito to discuss ways to um, keep improving our food sales. And then going forward, really, I think we're going to be concentrating on promoting our budget and getting out the vote and um, detailing a little bit more the sorts of positions like Donna was just talking about mm -hmm. um, that are in this budget. And hopefully we'll make it through to the final push. Jackie? Yes, I have, I have several things. But the first thing I want to say, because our student reps aren't here, that our, our spring teams are doing very well, and the softball team is just hitting it out of the park at the present time. <laughs> so Literally. take in a game, because it's really entertaining. The youngsters are doing a great job. Last Saturday, I attended the Maine School Boards Association um, Board of Directors meeting and Bob, Dr. Bob Hassan, our commissioner, was there with Aaron Chadbourne, a young man who works for the governor. He's the governor's spokesperson on education. And, and Aaron Chadbourne is the son of two former teachers from Gorham. And I know his mother well because she was a field hockey coach at Gorham High School and now is a successful <coughs> real estate person. But anyway, here's the message. Uh, Mr. Chadbourne says that the governor is passionate about education, and I choked. <coughs> but it seems as though, and he said this <coughs> right out, that the governor sometimes doesn't use the proper words. And we agreed with him. <laughs> but the commissioner uh, was very, very complimentary of our superintendent. He's met with her on several occasions and has many conversations and is beginning to rely on her, is what he told me. And here is what he would like to do in his next two years. He would like uh, to have everything based in data and research. Apple is helping him with this. He wants more project-based education in the state of Maine with an emphasis on literacy and math. As far as regionalization is concerned, he would like it to be voluntary. And he is suggesting that we might be able to do more with what he calls back office which we're already doing with our cafeteria, working with Cape Elizabeth. He thinks there are more opportunities for school districts to collaborate. One of the things that he is really looking forward to promoting is uh, regionalized professional development. And he's ready to pony up some money. He's interested in getting virtual technology available for rural populations so that youngsters uh, who do not have the opportunity to go to a tech school, for example, can have that exposure. And he's working on that uh, at the present time. He would like to do something with the Long Creek Development School. He would like to see that uh, be a worthwhile project for youngsters who are incarcerated so that when they come out of there, they truly are educated and not just uh, cons, so to speak. He wants to work with anybody who will work with him, is how he put it. He, I said to him, well, you know, we've had several committees appointed, study committees appointed that haven't even had a school board person on them. He said that'll change. He said it's it's good to have uh, citizens, but it's uh, and superintendents. But he agrees that school board people need to be represented. So I was 
somewhat encouraged mm -hmm. because what came to mind to me and Lester Harmon, who represents SAD 6, was the Sebago Alliance that had to fold because of lack of funding and a viable venue because the venue they were in needed such repair. So it appears as though that the uh, commissioner, at least, is willing to look into a facility where regionalization can happen. So uh, Mr. Harmon is going to get in touch with him personally to talk about what happened with the Sebago Alliance and is there any opportunity to reconstitute that. So I was, the, the meeting with the commissioner lasted, was scheduled for an hour, it lasted a little more than two. He was very upfront and answered a lot of questions from everybody in the room. So keep your fingers crossed that he can follow through with his dreams of what education should look like in the state of Maine. He was a good superintendent when he had his job in Cumberland, and I think he's a good educator. And I hope, I hope his focus will stay where it is at the present time. I also want to report that uh, ne negotiations are continuing. I think we had our final meeting on coaching stipends today, and you will be receiving a report probably at the next meeting. And uh, we continue to meet with the bus drivers on negotiations. I think that's it for the moment. Thank you very much. Okay. Can Thank I ask, you. Can I ask a question yeah. of that report? Yeah. Jackie, um, did Commissioner um, Hassan um, speak a little bit more in detail about um, uh, reducing the number of superintendents uh, to the degree that, that the um, governor wants and um, how do, are they thinking about going about that? It's not going to happen. At all? Well, he's talking more about regionalization. He's talking about the fact that, that maybe there are... It's, let me back up. He recognizes the fact that Maine will be very difficult to have regional superintendents because Maine communities are so responsible, is a nice word to put it, for their children. They don't want to lose control. But what he sees is that perhaps there can be one leader who can coordinate uh, fewer business managers, for example, instead of having one in every community. Each community is going to have to have a leader, whether it's a superintendent or whether it's going to be an assistant to the superintendent who's wherever they happen to be. But the fact is we have too many school districts with too few children to warrant spending the amount of money that we are spending in superintendent salaries. I think that the message that he was giving is that the money's not going to... He would like to see 65% of all dollars spent by the state on education going into the classroom. And that includes a teacher. So uh, how he's going to accomplish that, he hasn't really figured it out. But he's working on it. He's working on making it work. He doesn't. I don't. He, he doesn't seem to have a plan, quite frankly. And he knows that it's too dramatic and too drastic to have just a county superintendent. And did the governor's um, representative Chadbourne uh, respond to that? Yes, he he agrees. He, he agrees, agrees that that there has to be something accomplished so that mo more money is going into the classroom. 
Now, we offered several suggestions from around our table. You know, there were, what, 15, 16 people. Uh, but we're not talking to two stupid guys either. I think that they may, may, in two years, be able to develop something that is workable. Whether or not it will be accepted is the next question. Because if communities don't want to give up that leader, they're not going to. And there's no way that the state can force them without reducing subsidy. And you can't reduce subsidy because the children need the money. So it's a, at the moment, it's a catch-22. I can only tell you that they are trying to find a feasible solution. They did talk about the state contract for teachers. Uh, he didn't seem to think that that would fly because there needs to be another way to encourage teachers to move to Presque Isle and Machias and Callis and get a living wage. But they can't compete with the wages being paid in Portland and Bangor and Lewiston. And they can't afford to pay those wages to everybody in the state. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't know what's going to transpire. He really didn't address that at all, except to say that he didn't think it would happen. Hmm. Thanks. Well, in two years, there could be new people in those positions. That's so. right. Well, that's what he's saying. He has yeah. X number of days to accomplish his dream. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I do want to mention, too, that um, as we know from the last meeting, we had... Um, the discussion about later school start times for middle and high school students and shifting times for everybody, that implementation um, committee for the start times is um, being spearheaded by superintendent's office and um, being co-facilitated with Mary Record, health teacher at the high school. Um, we are still looking for involvement from staff at all levels and um, community members who would like to be involved in taking the steps as we implement it in fall of 2018. It's done. It's now the, the how we're going to roll it out in communication. So um, if you would like to join that committee, please go to the website. And there is a Google Doc to fill out still, or no? It's actually linked into the letter that was disseminated okay. to all parents and staff um, on Friday. And if there are any questions about it, they can call the superintendent's okay. office for more details. Our first meeting is scheduled um, for May 17th from 4.30 to 5.30 um, right here in Town Hall in Chambers B. And um, that the, the meeting on the 17th will be for those who are committed to being a part of the Implementation Planning Committee and will be setting our norms and expectations for the committee work and then really setting dates um, for you know, when will the work, when will the, the preliminary meetings fall? Um, and so bring your calendars for those of you who are already committed to being a part of that. And we have about 25 people so far, so it's a really healthy committee with um, opinions for, for um, all different sides of the issue, which is really healthy, I think, and was something that we were advocating for within the Google form when you opened it, was that, um, you know, we really want to make sure we have diverse thinking about the issues so we can come up with the very best possible plan. Okay. How many people are you hoping for? Um, I, I feel good with the number that we have right now. I imagine that um, as we start to set our norms and our intentions for the work that this group can do, that there will be some subcommittee work. And so I think there's opportunities for folks who maybe um, are unable to commit to uh, being a part of the whole process but are really passionate maybe about organizing communication public events, you know, that can support families or maybe really passionate about just generating a communication plan so how we can, you know, kind of get bite-sized chunks of information out to folks throughout the year so it's not um, overwhelming to anyone. And we're also, you know, looking for some other subcommittees that might emerge, like perhaps a child care, you know, uh, troubleshooting committee or um, 
some other things too. I have some general ideas, but it's really meant to be an authentic engagement of the committee so that together we're developing what the priorities are and um, it won't be me, you know, necessarily telling everybody what to do, but me more um, facilitating it with the support of Mary Record, who is our one of our health teachers at the high school and just spent uh, last weekend at the National Sleep Conference and came back really um, inspired and on fire about what she learned there. And we, um, when she went, she was looking at very specific things. So we wanted to hone in on how do we communicate with our community, community about the change, but then also what are the metrics that we can put in place to, to measure the success of the, of the change. All right. Great. Okay, so we don't have any students here tonight, so no student reports. That takes us to uh, new business, 11.0. 11.1 facility waiver request, Wentworth School. Want to give a little? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have a request that uh, my understanding is comes in annually, and this is a request from the Mix and Mingle Square Dance Club, and they are requesting a waiver of the facility charges for the use of the Wentworth Cafeteria for their monthly Saturday night square dances that will start in September 2017 and go through uh, May 2018. The Mix and Mingle Square Dance Club is a nonprofit group that has been using the school for more than 20 years um, for these Saturday night da dances. So they ask for a donation at the door to cover the costs of the caller, the cure, cure, cure um, and the custodian, and that they um, would accept they would expect to continue to pay for the cost of the custodian and then at the end of each year they make a donation to the school if the funds are available and plan to continue this annual contribution. Move um, approval. Second. Okay. Jackie. Uh, this group has been meeting since I have been on the board. And they started out in Bessie School. And they would move, uh, you know, their once, I think they had the once, I don't know if they had the once a month at Wentworth or four times a year, but they always had a bigger group that met at Wentworth several times a year. And uh, I think that, that this is one of the community organizations that, uh, that is worthwhile for us to waive the fee. I just had a qu yeah. question on, is, has it always been monthly, monthly dance? Jane, do you mind coming up to the oh, microphone sorry. so people can hear? So Jane Flanagan's here. She is there. Um, what What is your title right now? You are the organizer. I <laughs> am the school liaison. The oh, school liaison. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you are in the right place. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, so we use the currently the Wentworth School for the monthly dance to which we invite other clubs. Okay, and the other request would be is for the eight corner school, which you will get to, mm -hmm. and that is for weekly weekly classes. And we'd all be love to come to the school board meetings, except the weekly classes are Thursday night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 <Your> excuse. <Okay. laughs> Any more questions? Any questions? Not on this. How, how many um, members do you have for the weekly that come to eight corners every week? Uh, between 24 and, say, 35. Really? Wow. And of those this year, eight are students that will be graduating next week. Wow. I which is the biggest group students. we've had in seven years. Wow. Mr. And Mrs. Hughes, Carl, Mr. And Mrs. Carl Hughes were, were for many years the leaders of the group. And Mrs. Hughes worked for the school department for, for several years. She put a lot of band-aids on me at Oak Hill School. She was <laughs> the school secretary there <laughs> for a long time. I just have one question. How, how is it that you advertise this? I mean, do you advertise this out to the public to come join your classes? Is it a drop-in for a class, or is it you commit to... I'm coming in September and I'll finish my classes in May. And During the year, for about the 30 weeks that we meet, um, you, we start in September and 
because in order to know the basic 68 moves that you <laughs> you get now I now I'm seeing the now bigger you're getting picture. It. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm quite and the square dancing I was aware of. No. <laughs> it everybody comes to the classes saying, "Oh yeah, I square danced in gym class oh. when I was a kid." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a, um this is western square dancing that was popularized and hit its heyday in the 50s and 60s. That would be 1950s and 1960s. <laughs> um so um what they did was they took what is known as Eastern traditional square dancing in the Appalachians and standardized it, named the calls. There are 68 basic calls, but then there are more levels of calling. So you can start learning literally hundreds of calls, you know, over a long, much longer span of time. But these 68 calls are the basic calls that you learn in order to be able to dance at one of these big club dances. However, these are the same 68 calls that are used all over the world. So you could go internationally dancing all over the place. Okay. I could go. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. So you're currently holding your weekly classes at Eight Corners? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And in the past, how much, do you know how much the donations have been back? Back to the school department? Yeah. Well, it's not the 192000 <laughs> It's about three, hundred, three or $400 a year. So close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> that was we, a good try, Jody. That was uh, <laughs> you could see her working on her Okay. Thank you. Any other? Questions, comments? Okay. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. And we'll go right to 11.2, the eight corners. So we know now that that is the weekly class. That happens on Thursday. Move approval. Second. Second. Any questions about this? Okay. All in favor, eight corners? Oh, are you voting, Donna, or did you have a question? You voted? Okay. Let's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seven. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Maybe we'll Thank take a field you. trip on Thursday fun. evening. Yeah, we could take a field trip on <laughs> Thursday. We're going to hold the meeting. Move forward on the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Take us down the road. <laughs> Maybe go to the newsletter. <laughs> okay, 11.3 Blue Point School donation approval. Um, yeah, so if we would like to, we could do 11.3 yep, and 11.4 together, together um, because they are very similar. Mm -hmm. So Blue Point and Pleasant Hill both have received donations. Um, from the Hannaford Helps Schools program, and both schools have earned uh, $528 um, in this donation. And the way that the, do the donation comes to the schools is that customers participate in purchasing four participating products, um, and then uh, when those products are purchased, they they are they get a three dollar voucher that they can then donate to any school in the area, and so the donation is a, an accumulation of all of the three dollar vouchers that Blue Point received, um, totaling five hundred and twenty eight dollars, and then also the total that Pleasant Hill received, um, totaling five hundred and twenty eight dollars as well. So it kind of goes back to what Doug Bennett was saying about the the little small donations that add up. Um, and so we would like the school board to accept these donations from Hanover Help Schools. So move. Second. Well, thank you so much to Hanover for helping because it does help. And um, for the people who put in their $3 yeah, the vouchers. Yep. Do we know if there will be an eight corners one coming? I think they through? rotate through the schools. Oh, okay. It's those cardboard two box yeah. things you drop the receipts into. Yeah. I know. Fully aware. You're dropping them. <laughs> but I think they do rotate through the school. Okay. Do you know what the four products are? No. I think a lot of them are general. Some general of them are general, general mills, mills okay. usually. Um, yeah. Which is a there might be some others yeah. as well. But, you know, it's like if you purchase certain cereals, then there's usually a tag yeah. if you're at the Hannaford hanging below the item that says it's Hannaford Helping for Schools Hannaford or something. Helping schools or Everybody stack up. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments? <laughs> Okay, all in favor? Seven, thank you. Thank you, Hannaford. Okay, 12.0, we have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? 
Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.